you know? Maybe recording a visual novel when you are severely under the weather is not a good idea. But you want to know something? I got nothing. I just really want to... I really just want to see where this is going. So, last episode, there's not really much I can say. Everything started to actually look pretty good. Main character going to the hospital because he has a problem. Even though he was complaining about the girl stalking him initially, but... Actually, no, that was in one of his delusions. Uh, partaking in a sleep study to see if he's sleepwalking. Relatively good. Relatively good. I think it's a positive thing, him trying to seek help, in a way, but... I'm going to stand by what I mentioned before. Sarah is a problem. He relies so heavily on this one fictional character that she is not so much a crutch. She's a coping mechanism that is holding him back from actively becoming a better person. She is a problem. A serious, serious problem. And the fact that she also has pink hair, like the other girl, you know, the demon. Let's just say, I'm sticking with my idea that Sarah is a problem. So let's see what goes on here now. Let's continue. <gasps> I sprang up, only to find myself on the bed like before. My heart was pounding like crazy. I checked my chest. There was no wound anywhere, nor was there any blood. I was unharmed. I examined my surroundings. The curtain was closed, and it definitely hadn't been slashed open with a kitchen knife. I carefully placed my hand on the curtain, and when I opened it, I saw the doctor and Hazuki-san collapse on the floor, covered in blood. When that delusion appeared in my mind, I began to tremble all over again. You met... Tayona. Yes. It was just a dream. Nothing more than a crazy delusion. But I couldn't work up the courage to open the curtain. What if there was a sea of blood right past it? What if the demon girl was standing there holding a knife? The terror of those thoughts completely incapacitated me. Then, right at that moment... <coughs> Hello. The curtain was open from the outside. I couldn't help but scream and tumbled off the bed. No, I have a serious problem. Everything about my mind is breaking. <laughs> I timidly looked up at her. Hazuki-san was looking down at me with wide eyes. Her white coat had no trace of blood, and her face didn't have any stab wounds either. No, you're fine. No, you're fine. Our main character just has a serious problem. Has it been three hours already? Uh, I, yeah, yeah. God, I was pathetic. With my head still hanging down, I sluggishly rose to my feet. My heart was beating out of my chest, and it just wouldn't stop. But thank God it had been just a dream. It was like watching a horror movie. Are Hazuki-san peered at my face, her worry evident. I felt beyond embarrassed, so I couldn't look up at her. Just nodding was the best I could do. What time was it? How long had I slept for? I asked Hazuki-san that very question. Surprisingly enough, I'd slept for a full three hours. I guess I'd been more exhausted than I realized. Okay, so no signs of sleepwalking. 
Well, they did say that potentially certain conditions needed to be met in order for it to happen, so... Interesting. Hazuki-san's reassuring voice conveyed that to me. That's exactly what I was saying. We potentially didn't have all of the um, conditions that needed to be met. No, I really don't think I'm a sleepwalker, so... More importantly, I had to ask the doctor that really important question. But I couldn't see him anywhere. As I looked around, Hazuki... Son handed me a blank form. Not really focusing all that hard, I took it from her and ran my eyes over it. It was a fill-in-the-blank style form. それはあなたの心理状態を把握するための psychological test, okay. So basically, they do their study, I fill out the form, they go over said form, and then they move on I guess they make their decisions from that point on. It, it, since it, uh, Probably seeing another patient if I had to guess. Yep, I was right. Okay, good, good. I, I would definitely set up an immediate appointment right off the bat. Then again, it wasn't like he was my primary physician or anything, I supposed. He'd probably just given Hazuki-san a bunch of directions to get me out of here. Well, oh, guess that means there's pretty much no point to me coming to the hospital today. I really wanted to ask Dr. Takashina about the someone that wasn't me controlling me. Whatever it meant, it was a really chilling symptom, so I didn't want to leave without getting an answer. That being said, I didn't have the courage to demand Hazuki-san to bring him back to see me, especially when she already looked so apologetic. Reluctantly, I decided to give the test a try. I guess I'd write about my symptoms on the back of the sheet or something. If I did that, I should be able to get another examination scheduled for next week. Exactly! Just gotta write it out. Ah, yes or no, okay. あてはまる点があったらイエスにチェックしてくださいね。今後の西条さんの治療に対する参考にしますから、じっくり考えて答えてください。Got it. Pretty standard fair. Hazuki-san went out of her way to explain the procedure thoroughly. The test has some strange questions mixed in. Ones you wouldn't normally expect to run into at a hospital. Like what? It really did seem like some sort of psychological test. Would they really be able to actually learn something from questions like these? I don't know, let me see the questions! Hazuki-san stared at me intently. She showed no signs of leaving. But it wasn't like she had nothing else to do or anything. It was more like she was monitoring. Uh, no, watching over me or something. My nervousness of being watched made it hard for me to think clearly, but... I guess she was just doing her job. Either way, I knew I ought to fill out the test quickly. What? Oh shit, wait, I actually have to fill this sucker out? When you have business to take care of, you prefer to use emails over phone calls. Correct? Your ears ring every now and then. No. You felt someone's gaze and turned around before. Y yeah. You have seen objects that are supposedly stationary move for an instant. Uh, no. You have experienced a premonition. Uh... Um, y yeah? While looking at a digital clock in passing, you've seen the same numbers appear in sequence. Um, I don't think so. You've already cried once this month. Uh, that... Um... Okay, that's a bit of a... That's definitely a bit of a weird one. I don't... I don't think so... Whoa, you can... Uh, uh... Uh... Um... Uh... 
Okay, fuck it. Yeah. I'm writing these down because that is what this main character is. I, I, I am, I'm making the assumption here. Actually, wait. No, I'll just, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to know. I, I'm not reading that out loud. You can daydream without closing your eyes. Yes. The frontal view of a car sometimes looks like a face. Actually, to be fair, personally, that just kind of happens to me. You have a hard time going to the bathroom after watching a horror movie. Uh, you cannot handle haunted houses. Never really been. I think I've only been to one. No, no, that was just a that was just a horror thing. So no, that wasn't a haunted house. That was just a horror attraction. Never mind. So no. Wait, no, the main character died. Stupid. When you start reading a book, you become so immersed in it that you lose track of time. Yeah. Well, actually, personally, yes. You believe that other planets inhabited by human-like creatures exist. Am I supposed to be answering for the main character, or am I answering for me at this point? No, it's for the main character because, dear God, some of these... Ugh. I'm just trying to fill out the ones that'll probably actually get him help. The personality attributed to your astrological sign matches your personality perfectly. I don't fucking know. You're prone to motion sickness. Personally, yes, I am. You believe there is a god. Eh. You have a strong ability to sense the supernatural. Uh, you have dream... Yes. Oh, wait. No, that's the main character. Sorry. You have been in a dream in which you knew you were dreaming. You have experienced memory... Well, how would you remember that? You have a hard time making eye contact with people. Yes. Merely the sight of sour food makes your mouth fill with saliva. You feel like yawning when other people do. Everybody does that. <sighs> okay, I, I'm literally just trying to fill out the things that I feel apply to our main character at this point. Trying to make sure that he's... Probably... He probably needs to get... He, he desperately needs help. He needs help. I, I honestly, I don't even know entirely, these are very weird fucking questions. Like, it started off normal, but then it just started getting really, really bizarre. Nozomi. How much of this is, oh god, wait, problem number one, oh. Hi, otsukaresama deshita. Hazuki-san thanked me as I answered the final question, despite the fact that I hadn't said anything. I felt pretty embarrassed at being watched the whole time. My face was probably bright red. Because of that, I avoided looking at Hazuki-san when I handed her the test. There'd been no time to write my symptoms on the back. Oh, good, medication. Already? They were prescribing me something? Dr. Takashina had never said anything about that. Ah, I see. No, that seems fair. Oh, wow. Thoughtful as ever, Dr. Takashina. And yet when I realized I would have to wait in that lobby again, my mood was immediately sent spiraling. I couldn't tell if he was being sarcastic with that reading, or... I don't know. Value of death? Life is suffering caused by desire. To end the suffering, we must end desire. The contagious madness, the unchanging me. Power lines. 11.24. What the fuck? By the time I'd gotten back to Shibuya, it was already evening. The hospital was technically in Shibuya ward. But since Yayogi was the closest station to it, commuting via train was the fastest. But the Yamanote line had been as crowded as ever. And despite only being two step stops long, the trip back still made me incredibly tired. 
Riding the train any farther would have been a pain in the ass, so I decided to get off at Shibuya Station and make my way back to base from there. Even then, there were still tons of people outside the station. I despised crowds. They made my head spin. Not wanting to stay much longer, I tried to speed walk out of the scramble crossing. But even walking straight was nigh impossible. Stumbling even slightly caused people from both behind and in front to bump into me. What's more, a bunch of people handing out pocket tissue packs blocked the way, practically forcing everyone who passed by to take them. Fed up with everything, I ignored the first person handing them out, but took some off the second because at least she was a cute girl. I was so sick and tired of these people handing out tissue packs and shit to push their products. Didn't they have anything better to do than to stand right in the middle of the road? Well, whatever. It was free, so might as well take it. I wouldn't necessarily do that. You never know because... Well, actually, wait a minute. This is Japan. They probably have a better standard of health anyway, so... Eh. Inside the tissue pack I took was a red flyer, and there was a paragraph's worth of shit written on top of it with white ink. Talk about ostentatious, like, holy shit! You couldn't exactly miss something with that color scheme. As I walked along, I gave it a quick skim. Whoa. It was a blood donation flyer. As I read it, I thought back to the form I'd filled out in the hospital. Type B blood is in short supply. Currently, Shibuya Ward is suffering from a severely short supply of Type B blood. This has only continued to worsen, and we've been struggling to secure the proper quantities of blood for those in need of transfusions. In the worst case scenario, this may lead to the deaths of many. Without your cooperation, lives may be lost. Please consider becoming a blood donor and visit the donation located at Shibuya Station of the Inako Shira Line. Huh. I didn't have any memory of filling out something like that four years ago. Maybe the way they examined patients had changed recently. Even then, though, something felt oddly familiar about the test. I like these semi-anime backgrounds we got here. They're very... There's a, there's a lot of them. Deja vu. I've been to this place before. I've been getting hit by it all the time recently. Having my mind and body not function the way I wanted them to, to the sense... The sense of dissonance was an incredibly uncomfortable feeling, so in order to ascertain the true cause behind the deja vu, I tried flipping back through the pages of my memories. I thought back to when Mom had taken me to the hospital about once a week. I'd kept my mouth shut at all times, and only expressed myself via nodding or shaking my head. Jesus Christ, do I sound like this whenever I'm sick all the time? At first, I'd been taken to a perfectly ordinary examination room, but since I showed no signs of improvement, I started going to a different room before long. The room had essentially been a counseling room, which meant it put the patient's relaxation first and foremost. In other words, there were sofas and plushies and whatnot located all throughout the room. Dr. Takashina had taken a very patient approach to treating me, all while refusing to blame my situation on anyone. He alone caught on to how I was merely choosing not to speak, rather than having the inability to do so. Meanwhile, my mom would always talk to me in an unnaturally cheery voice. Every time I'd gone to the hospital, the doctor would always welcome me with a refreshing smile. The nurses also treated me with all the love and care they could. And... Hmm? And... I had a feeling that there had always been... One more person in the room. Some do with... Oh! Right. There'd been a man in a black suit. One that felt fairly out of place in a hospital. As I'd been doing my best not to speak, I never asked about him. I didn't know who the hell he was the entire time he was there. He, he didn't feel like a doctor, and... He always stood all alone a fair distance away from everyone else, all while gazing out the window. I had dubbed him Mr. Nozomi in my head, though that wasn't his actual name or anything. Nozomi. 
The man in the suit always had a badge on his chest, no matter the situation. And on that badge was the word Nozomi. It had looked like a logo to me, though, so it probably wasn't a name tag. Wasn't Nozomi on that paper that we filled out? Oh, I knew why it was bothering me now. That test from before also had the Nozomi logo printed on it. I had a hunch that I'd seen it somewhere before, and now I finally remembered exactly where. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off my chest. That aside, what was Nozomi, anyway? I was pretty sure it was the name of a business. Never offer zebras ominous milk. I ink. Nozomi san te yu bijin onna shachou ga setsuritsu shita counter tero soshiki toka. Hehe, manga mitai da. I guess that's one way of looking at it. I know Nozomi is like a rather. I mean. Anytime you hear Nozomi, it's usually associated with a female character. Alright, now we're back here. When I'd arrived at my base, I'd gone straight to look up Nozomi online. However, there were so many results that I couldn't manage to pin down anything specific. Well, then shorten the search to, like, Nozomi Hospital or some shit. Well, let's go with a more normal theory first. That Nozomi guy could have been from the company that made the tests, and he was just at the hospital in order to sell that or something. The hospital had been adopted the tests recently, and they decided to have me fill one out today. Yeah, I doubted that. I'd never heard of some rando attending a patient's examination like that. So who the hell was that Nozomi guy? Memories kept pulling at my mind, but I was fed up with it at that point. Either way, the reason behind my deja vu is now clear. I decided that I'd ask Dr. Takashina about my memory issues next week, but until then, I was going to stay cooped up in my room without bothering with school. There was no way in hell I'd go to a school where people were trying to hurt me. In all honesty, I really don't want to screw up the minimum attendance chart I'd so carefully constructed, but it wasn't worth getting myself killed over. I gave up on my Nozomi search and went to look for any interesting looking threads on at channel. The news board was almost completely filled with new gen threads. Let's see. 6338 AM morning and ons. New gen news bearer. Symbol, symbol, symbol. New gen number one. Group dive. Number two. Man child. Number three. Cruce affiction. Number unknown. To be continued. Shutters. Oh my god. So many of these weird ass emojis. Yo, you guys ever have a sneezing fit where. Like, you sneeze for so long, after, like, the last one, you perceive a new color that doesn't exist. Even the ESO board had threads like, let's try and replicate new gen crimes in ESO. And to be honest, I was beyond sick. And tired of the whole thing. I, I mean, I was right about that. I was beyond sick right now. <sighs> Diving back into ESO, I found Grimm. The Ad Channel News Board is super fucking boring recently. They really won't shut the fuck up about New Gen. Well, it is the biggest thing of note recently. Whenever a new incident like this happens, people always freak the fuck out about it. Shitstorm incarnate, lol. What was that tip that popped up? Shitstorm, I'm assuming? Yeah, I had a feeling. A state of furious, chaotic excitement of activity in a channel thread. Oh, hey, we got diagnostic results. Ooh, okay. Okay. Didn't realize this popped up in here. You are slightly delusional. Perhaps not everything in your life is going favorably, but you have one or more things that you can devote yourself to, and you work hard at them every day. For this reason, you probably don't have much time for things like delusions. If you keep trying your hardest, you should be able to live a fulfilling life. But I urge you to please be careful. If you by some chance fail or lose one of the things you've devoted yourself to, you may suddenly find yourself tempted to abandon everything and escape into delusions. A word from Nanami. If you're going to turn out like my big bro, make sure you're someone other people can rely on when things get tough. Even better if you stay in tune with the latest fashion trends. 
Oh, and it'd make me really happy if you made sure to take care of your family, too. A word from Senna. Whatever you're aiming to do, push as hard as you possibly can to achieve it. But if you need a break, take one. It's not smart to work too hard. You'll just end up burning yourself out. I recommend adding a good walk to your daily routine. Interesting. It's funny that it didn't even tell me what this... Or I guess I didn't notice this, but yeah, we got a diagnosis now. Fascinating. Huh. They still haven't caught the culprit? I mean, you and I both know the police are competent, lol. There's tons of idiots all over the web pinning the culprit as some moe hot chick, lol. That demon girl. The desolate eyes of the girl I'd seen at the crucifixion murder scene flashed through my mind, and I felt a shiver run down my spine. As much as I didn't want to remember, that ghastly memory would come back any time I let my guard down. Wait, I'd seen the culprit's face. I knew who they were. Should I report to the police? You should report it, but I didn't want to get involved. <sighs> Demon girl, is there already an offshoot of the perp like that? Uh... That might be taken a bit too far, to be honest. Anyway, anyway these day, these new gen cases are seriously interesting, dude. I've joined the Frippara new gen community. What? You're getting way too into this. Everyone but you and Sisson from our guild has joined. Oh god, was he serious? Now I wouldn't be able to hop on and chat with my guild anymore. New gen some weird shit, man. Give me the, gives me the chills. I knew you were into gory stuff, Grim, but... <sighs> Don't tell me you're the type that looks for artistic merit murder cases. True. The crucifixion corpse could have easily been mistaken for modern art, so it'd be fair to say it was the it was artistic in some cases. In some sense. My dude! Nah, the only thing you should be seeking here is as lewd it is. Is how lewd it is. It's like the ultimate form of BDSM. No. No, it's not. This guy's hopeless. I better do something quick. You'll get him once you leave behind your virginhood, Nightheart Don. You lowly bastard. Are you saying you're not a virgin? That fucking face. <laughs> You damn traitor! Back on topic, though. The site pulling all the info together is fills the brim, so you really ought to take a look. Uh, I really didn't want to look. I was scared to. I wanted to escape the reality in which I'd witnessed the scene of the crime. That's why I'd been intently avoiding all info related to New Gen ever since then. I wanted to fool myself into believing that the gruesome scene I'd seen had been just a delusion. But... That was basically a god in ESO. Not just someone strong, but someone who knew all. Not to mention I was the guild leader. It'd be beyond embarrassing if the organizer of the group couldn't keep up with the latest topics. I had to make sure that didn't happen. I clicked the link that to the site Grimm had sent me. The top of the site had the title, All Things New Gen, written in big letters right in the center of the page. This type of website was basically like a wiki. It was open to the public, and anyone could enter info related to a particular topic. In the case of this new gen site, loads of people entered info concerning new gen, and the site updated as they did. Sites like it had tended to serve, suffer from unreliable info being mixed in, as well as its fair share of vandalism from trolls, but they could still be pretty useful for getting a quick overview of an incident. Many links were pasted all over the page. I promptly clicked on the link that read, Current Timeline. My heart raced. Just reading the site was making me nervous. My palms were slick with sweat. Whoa. The first incident dubbed the group dive was the suicide of the five high schoolers that had jumped to their deaths. Let's look at this page. 
Earthquakes of two months ago, brutal, bizarre serial murders, three in total, corpse affixed to a concrete wall. Witnesses claim they heard nails hammered around crime scene. Are the crimes all being committed by different people? Crucifixion man-child group dive. Victim was a 56-year-old university professor. Oh, that's a, that's a concrete piece of information there. Also, the earthquake of two months ago. I wonder if that earthquake has anything to do with what's going on. What do we got here? Bookmarks. New. Oh. Oh, wait. These are your bookmarks? Templates. Ume. Coco Go Dio. Everyday Booty Booty. What the? Icon Key Tune Con Con. Bye bye dot net not. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. I don't know why net not got me. New Swen. Oh, news and news backwards, of course. Memo, mo, mo, me. Good, come, come. Hiki, niki, futan. Okay, futanari daisuki. Trick to watori. Watori? Like, death note watori? Homo homo station. Nyokin, nyo, nyokin, yoki moon. Nyokin Yoki fucking Nyokin Yoki move fucking I can't I give up Nyoki Nyoki move Moon Pantu Pari I I fucking uh. It had happened in the dead of night on September seventh, which was about a month ago at this point. The building they jumped off of was Cornelius Tower, which was located in Shibuya. They dove off the rooftop helipad. Of course. All five had died instantly. Wait a minute, hold on. Two months ago, an earthquake with a seismic intensity of three occurred, with Shibuya at its epicenter, and yet there were eight fatalities. Eight. Three. Five. Hmm. Keep that in mind. According to the autopsies, the five all had foreign pieces of flesh under their fingernails, along with various scratch marks on their hands. So they put up a fight. Based on that, it was surmised that the five had been holding hands as they jumped, for one reason or another. Oh. There was no suicide note of any form on the rooftop. A person online one of those people acting like Snake, had actually gone to Cornelius Tower themselves, reported that the door to the roof had a sign on it saying, no entry to unauthorized personnel, and that it was locked practically 24-7. Snake? The name of the protagonist of a certain video game who is a professional in covert operations. Oh, Metal Gear. It is often referenced on the internet when an ordinary person is conducting anonymous or secret investigations. For example, during an operation, one of these individuals might say, this is Snake. I've infiltrated the building. Oars? What does that mean? An ideograph depicting a person on all fours. Depressed. O is the head. R is the arms and torso. And Z is the legs. Oh shit, I see it now. Oh. Okay, that's... Uh, okay. Typically used to express despair, dejection, or frustration. There's no set way to pronounce it, and as such, people may pronounce it as orts, ors, or ors. I thought it was supposed to be, like... Uh, I thought it was supposed to be something similar to FFS, like, for fuck's sake, or something like that. Okay. It's just a fucking person. Okay. I'm an idiot. Naturally, the door had been locked at the time of the incident, and the key was not found among the belongings of the deceased. Essentially, the rooftop helipad was effect had effectively been a locked room, and the method the five had used to enter was completely unknown. There was a very high chance that someone other than the five had been present at the scene of the incident. The second incident, dubbed the man-child murder case, had occurred 12 days after the first incident, placing it on September 19th. Early in the morning, a university student on their way home from a karaoke session had discovered a collapsed man covered in blood by the Shibuya Station underpass. The victim had been a university student residing in Shibuya Ward, a 21-year-old man named Konoe Chizuo. Chizuo. Konoe Chizuo. 
He was already dead when he was discovered, but his abdomen had an unnaturally very large swelling. According to the autopsy, someone had performed an abdominal incision on the man, stuffed a newly bo- Stuffed a newly born fetus inside the man's stomach, then stitched it back up. Whew. Okay. Moreover, a DNA test confirmed that the fetus had no blood relation to the victim. The victim was a bachelor and had no relations with any women. It was only online speculation, but it was assumed that the 32-week-old fetus had been removed from its mother's body via C-section. However, the mother's identity, current whereabouts, and, other we and even whether or not she was alive was completely unknown. It was possible that the police had already discovered her whereabouts, but if they had, nothing had been publicly revealed. Yeah, that's enough to make me throw up. I averted my eyes from the monitor to keep myself from throwing up. Jesus Christ, talk about nauseating. The culprit was completely insane, and maybe, just maybe, these ghastly murders. <sighs> had been carried out by that girl. Well, she's the one that's... Japan is over! Weird. Okay... So, if that girl is really doing such horrific things, I'm sorry, no amount of explanation is probably going to make it okay. I don't know. I stared at Seraton in an attempt to bleach my eyes. There he goes, immediately trying to rely on his addiction. And with that, I somehow managed to stabilize my mental state. I considered taking the meds the doctor had given me, but Seraton did the job nonetheless. Take the fucking medication! Anyway, while that might have been necessary to maintain Nightheart's honor, reading all that gory stuff really fucking sucked. Wait, just did the... Oh no, it's a delusion, isn't it? が同盟無点なら別に止めないけど。ああ、ボーイ。辛そうな時は見てられないさ。もうやめよう。楽しいことだけしてようよ。ノー。You Jesus Christ. What has my channel become? Oh, how wonderful and caring you are, Seraton. Seraton was the only one who would stay by my side. I couldn't ask for a better waifu. I just said that out loud. I rested my chin on my hands above the table, watching Seraton smile as I took deep breaths. Ah, my soul had been healed. I might be able to get through a little more if I kept glancing at her as I read. And so I decided to put that into practice right away. Come to think of it, why had those two unrelated cases both been slapped at the new gen label? Probably because maybe the crosses were there? I don't know. Were they? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out, like, okay, five people fall off a building, one guy's nailed to a wall... And another person has his stomach, like, cut open and a fetus shoved into it. There's... There's no correlation. It has nothing to do with their age because one of them was 56 years old and the other one was a 21-year-old. That's too big of a jump. I don't... I'm trying to find a connection here. <sighs> Apparently, I've been treated as a group suicide. But after the man-child incident had occurred, 
people online reinvestigated it and discovered the unnatural circumstances surrounding the scene of the crime. Rumors then began to appear saying that the five may have actually been killed and that the suicide label was merely a cover-up. According to the parents and good friends of the five victims, there was no way it could have been suicide. Then, the mass media had started making connections between the two incidents, starting with where they occurred. Shibuya. Madness explodes in today's youth! The new generation madness! Sensationalist headlines like that had started popping up everywhere. To my understanding, anyway. Then came the third case. The murder case I'd witnessed, dubbed the Crucifixion. The site didn't have as much info on this case, likely due to it having only occurred recently. The victim, 56-year-old Ota Hisashi, was a university professor who had been crucified with stakes to the concrete wall of a vacant house. That was all that had been publicly revealed. Many of the neighboring residents had claimed that, for over an hour after the time the crime was thought to have occurred, around 8 p.m., they could hear the sound of nails being hammered into something. Even I'd heard the sound. I could hear it even now. A horrible, terrifying sound. On a related note, no connection between the third case and the group dive or the man-child had been discovered yet. But with it being the third abnormal incident that happened in quick succession in Shibuya, the crucifixion was naturally treated as another new-gen incident. The police and mass media believed that all the crimes had different culprits, but the predominant opinion online, or rather, what most of the net hoped was going on, was that the crimes either shared a single culprit or an organized group of culprits. There also were many occult-based theories whispered about online, such as that everything had begun with the earthquake from two months ago. That's what I was thinking. Two months ago, an earthquake with a seismic intensity of three occurred, with Shibuya at its tempest as its epicenter. Although the scale was fairly minor, there were still eight fatalities, which became a popular topic of discussion. Come to think of it, it was true that the new gen cases had begun after that earthquake. Because of that, the new gen occultists argue that the eight deaths in the earthquake should be counted as the first new gen incident, causing a dispute between them and the new gen mainstreamers. Regardless, the entire situation was abnormal. After all, despite the fact that the three brutal cases had occurred in quick succession, no clues on any of their culprits had been found. And many online were waiting eagerly for a fourth case. If I wasn't directly connected to it all, I probably would have joined in on the chaos myself. Posted in a few threads, made a few theories. I could have been waiting excitedly for the fourth incident at this very moment. Damn it! All these assholes were just having the time of their lives, weren't they? Yeah. Plot twist, you hear a knock on the door. Who is it? There she is. A week had passed since the crucifixion, but neither the demon girl nor the police had made any moves. If they knew I'd been at the scene of the crime, they would definitely come and question me about it. But there hadn't been any signs of that actually happening. Thank God. Uh, it looked like I wasn't going to get dragged into this after all. You're the main character in a visual novel. You are. That claim Yua had thrusted at me flashed into my mind. Even though I'd finally started to relax, that feeling of despair came flying right back in an instant. The image sent by Shogun. The data was still on my PC. Yua's claims are no more than delusions she dreamt up. Her deductions were a total stretch, not to mention logically bankrupt. Yes, because you calling out other delusions is totally fair, as you certainly do not have delusions. I'm just saying. While I might have ended up not asking about it in the hospital today, the idea of me doing things without remembering them was completely absurd. Utterly impossible. I mean, nothing like that had ever happened to me before. So the gory image was obviously faked. Oh no! 
あの画像解析しちゃおうよ But it's so disgusting I really don't want to look at it any more than I already have あの女をロンパしちゃえばタッキーはもう怯えることなく平穏な生活に戻れるんだよ Could you not refer to her as that please? やるしかないよ Of course, she was exactly right. You had talked to me as if I were the culprit behind the crucifixion, but that wasn't true at all. I mean, I'd seen the culprit's face, as if I'd let you put the blame on me after that. So, the gulp, I double click on the folder where the images were catched. Yeah, give me away from this creepy thing you get. Whoa. Whoa, hold up. Perspective switch? It was the first time in three days that Ben Bon Yasuji had set foot in the Shibuya police station conference room. Bon? The investigation meeting for the Maruya Macho crucifixion homicide case had already begun, and Bon was greeted with universal gazes of displeasure for his tardiness. Bon forced a polite smile before bending down to sit. He supposed that it was not quite the right time to reveal that he'd been cooped up in the bathroom with diarrhea. Thank you for that. The Maria Macho crucifixion homicide case had been assigned to the Shibuya police station on the morning after the incident. As they were lacking in manpower due to the Cornelius Tower mass suicide case and the Shibuya station undergrad and fetus homicide case. Even the third rate assistant inspector, Bon, whom the Metropolitan Police Department's investigation division was practically, were practically begging to retire, had been called in by the main office. Moreover, as all of the incidents had occurred within the Shibuya police station's jurisdiction, it was an unusual situation in which a single jurisdictional station was utilizing three special investigation teams. Because of this, operations were made quite difficult, with the three investigation teams having access to only one large conference room that they had to alternate between. The mass media was hailing it all as one large case known as New Gen. And there are rumors that the police would combine the three investigation teams in order to make a new gen investigation division, thus solving the issue of manpower. All the detectives found this project completely asinine, regarding it as nothing more than an absolute joke. Where's Gumshoe? Bond Superior, Inspective Matsunaga. Ooh, I like that name, Matsunaga who was in charge of the investigation team, called out to Bon with a piercing gaze. But Bon did not notice this. He simply continued to cool himself down with a handheld fan as he took a moment to recuperate. Nope, sorry about that. Not listening. Hi? The whispers of Bond's partner, a rookie named Sua, finally got him to realize he was being called. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. oh my god, it's homeless gumshoe. Oh my god. You really let yourself go. Is this what happened because you kept living in the friggin' apartment building and your pay kept getting reduced? I am sure. Suicide as a superior jabbed him in the elbow and stood up straight and tall. Okay. Murmurs echoed throughout the conference room. The relaxed atmosphere from before had been turned on its head. The other detectives began to take frantic notes in order to not miss a single word of Sua's report. Considering the situation, it was no surprise they were so frantic about it. After all, three horrific cases had occurred within their jurisdiction in the span of a single month, only one of which was not ruled as a homicide as of yet. Their strong determination to find the culprit even in the face of their reputations was only natural. Alright, show us.
As per the instructions Bon had given him in advance, Sua had the projector display the footage on the projector screen. Watch, it's going to show me walking back to the alley where the crucifixion was taking place. And then I'm going to be a suspect. The projector shown an image of the confined, filthy black back alley of Maria Macho. It was night, and there were very few street lights present, so virtually nothing was visible. Fifty meters from the scene of the crime, okay. The parking lot was only big enough to fit two vehicles. It was a tiny plot of land interposed between two buildings, and it was constructed without any real care as well. The scene of the crime was not visible in the footage, and not even the path leading to it could be seen. All it displayed was the road that was one further away from the crime scene. The video had no sound. The time the video had been recorded was graciously displayed on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, 9.34 p.m. So this was like four minutes after the sounds had stopped. The sounds of the, the sounds of the nails being hammered. Okay. Wait, during that time, they run from the back of the road in front of the parking lot to the front. Again, is that going to be our character that's running? Our boy Tom. I knew it! Us running away in fear. I fucking knew it. Immediately following Sue's explanation, a silhouette appeared in the footage. They seemed to be in a great hurry and ran from the back of the screen to the front. As the resolution was quite poor, not even their gender could be ascertained at a glance, but Bond had already gotten the crime laboratory to analyze that very point. Wait, why are you correcting yourself? With an age estimated between late teens and early 20s, and then you correct it to and early 20s. Are you not allowed to, like, do, like, shorthand speech? Or, wait, no, it's probably something to do with, um... It's probably some, uh... Because there are some things that are lost in translation whenever it comes to, like, localization and stuff like that, so... He, he probably was speaking in a different, um... Somebody could probably correct, or, uh... Correct me on this. That's more prefer, like more proficient in Japanese. He probably was speaking in a uh, natural dialect rather than a professional dialect. Uh, I don't know. Ninso no hanbets made wa muri deshita. Fukusou ga kanari tokuchou toki desu ga, kore wa shouto ni aru shiritsu suimei gakuen no danshi seifuku to wakarimashita. Yep, and because of that footage. Everybody at Sume, or specifically the men that fit this profile, basically us, we are going to be looked at suspiciously. All because of that. So, the right hand. The image enlarged on the right hand the image enlarged on the right hand of the suspicious individual. It appeared to be grasping so. Oh no! Slow the size of the to Wakaruna. Hashirinagara Udeo Hutte Rusai. この握りしめている何かが駐車場の照明に反射して光を放ってるんだな、これが。Because we took a nail. Oh my god, we we implicated ourselves without knowing. Now the good part, Bond took over Sue's explanation. 形状からして 犯行に使われた十字架型の杭である可能性がある Dude, we're fucked. The detectives continue to murmur noisily. The crucifixion culprit may be a high schooler. The proposition was fairly shocking to them. After all, it meant that the new generation madness moniker that the mass media had been pushing could actually become a reality. Yeah, we are screwed. 
But then again, you can't really blame the detectives. They have this information, so it's only natural that they would immediately assume potentially that this character is a suspect. It's, yeah, fuck. Honestly, with 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 all the information that these guys are being presented, it only makes sense for them to assume, well, rather than, you know, they have a suspect. Bond stroked the stubble on his jaw. It was a habit of his. Whenever he felt one step closer to cornering a culprit, he would always reach for that satisfying, scraping sensation. <sighs> Sua took a deep breath and sat down. <laughs> like, boss, what the hell? You stole my spotlight! Ignoring Sue's grumbling, Bond once again burned the image of the high school boy into his mind. Alright, right at the bat, from what little I've seen of this Bond character, I think I've got a good vibe on this. I think I've got a good feel for him. He is lazy, in a way. He's No, no, not lazy. He's very laid back. As in, he's, uh, he's not, I, I, it was wrong for me to call him lazy. He's very laid back, but he's good at what he does. That's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from this guy. That's what I'm thinking. Like, he has, despite the fact that he may be a little bit laid back and has the appearance of being lazy, he's actually very skilled at what he does. So he feels like, he can, wa he can walk the walk and talk the talk. So that gives him kind of an excuse to just sort of relax a bit more. Oh, it's cool how we're seeing like a process of him going into the internet catch. I'm not entirely sure that's how that works. Sure enough, the image Shogun had sent was in my catch folder. 168491.jpg was its name. Obviously, a part of me was still hesitant to even look at it. I mean, it was a pretty fucking nasty image, grotesque as all hell, too. Also, this will, this image may actually prove my theory that I've got going on, because in the lower left corner of said image, it looks like there's a figure running away, and I bet you it's him. I want to see if it's true or not. I was sure just looking at it would throw me right back to the scene of the crucifixion, where that violent scene had taken place right in front of me. But even then, I needed to expose you as flawed logic, and therefore guarantee my own safety and innocence. Thankfully, since Saraton was there for me, I could handle a little bit of gore. Mustering all the courage I had, I double-clicked the file. Ah, uh, that might be him down there. Yeah, it is. I can see the blue hair. I can see his uniform, too. That's him. God, it was so gory. But compared to the crucifixion I'd seen, I'd seen in person... It wasn't quite as bad. Telling myself that the image had to be fake, I was just barely able to stomach it. When I'd first received the image, I'd close it immediately after looking at it once. I hadn't inspected it thoroughly. This time, holding back the urge to vomit, I decided to examine the image in excruciating detail. I didn't know much about what, how to tell whether a picture was fake or not, but taking a look at the shadows, seeing if there was anything off about the surrounding area, and other stuff like that should probably be enough. The only possibility I had in mind was that the photo had taken in advance, and the crucifixion corpse had been put there on top of it using CGI. And then, the day after Shogun had sent the picture to me, they'd executed the crime exactly as I'd edited it in the image. Thanks to the poor resolution and how dark the image was, I could only see the stakes, leaving the identity of the victim unclear. Light was only hitting the area surrounding the corpse, yet something about the image was just begging for me to look at the crucifixion itself. I felt like that was the intent of the person who'd made it. I mean, come on, focusing that much lighter on the corpse is kind of overkill, don't you think? Well, it wasn't like I'd actually been paying close attention to the actual crime scene, so I couldn't really jump to conclusions. In the picture, the demon girl wasn't standing in front of the crucified corpse. But when I opened my eyes and looked even closer, I noticed a silhouette in a dark spot on the left side of the image. I'd almost completely missed it.
Due to the low res of the image, the shadow of the figure stood and blended perfectly into the surrounding scenery. You could at least miss it if you weren't paying close attention. Obviously the image was fake, but what if the person who'd taken the photo had accidentally left themselves in it? If they had, it was possible that they'd forgotten to edit themselves out when they tampered with the image. It looked like they were wearing a Sumai uniform. In that case, it had to be the demon girl. She'd been wearing one at the time of the crime, after all. Oh, you f oh, you poor fool. But when I took a closer look, I noticed that the figure's hair was actually pretty short. The demon girl had long hair, like Yua. All right then, time for some computer magic. I need the details here. I opened up some image processing software and dragged the image in. Then with a big gulp, I selected the levels option in the adjustments menu and brightened the once darkened corners of the image. Huh? Fucking knew it. What the hell? Pictured on the screen. Pictured on the screen was unmistakably Ukta. me. How is it me? It didn't make any sense. I'd never even been there before September 29th. It was fake. It had to be fake. I couldn't find any bit of proof that it was, but it absolutely had to be. No, nothing made sense otherwise. I mean, Shogun had sent the image on the 28th, and, and the crucifixion murder case had occurred on the 29th. If the image was of what had happened on the 29th, then that would mean it was a picture taken from the future. Do you have precognitive powers? I kicked the plastic bottle at my feet and closed the paint program. I checked the file's properties to see when it was made and then... I lost all words. The timestamp was the 28th, but that was the least of my worries now. In the comment section of the properties menu was a single inconspicuous sentence, a sentence my eyes couldn't look away from. Whose eyes are those eyes? I slammed my hands on the keyboard before shoving it to the edge of my desk. I clutched my head. I could barely hold back my tears. What the hell had I done to deserve a whole week of nothing but more and more insane bullshit? Why was I the only one that had to deal with this shit? <laughs> Hang on a second. If they had somehow managed to get a photo of me and then they'd edit it into the image of the crime scene, that would either mean Shogun had taken a photo of me without my consent or that he had somehow obtained my photo from another source. And considering how he'd suddenly entered the chat room and started talking to me right after Grimm had left, he had likely been aiming for me and me alone from the very start. He's rationalizing everything right now. It's the only way to keep himself from his mind breaking. Shogun might very well have discovered my real identity. If that was true, then Shogun, the demon girl, anyone could raid my base at any moment, and then I'd be abduct abducted. I felt a chill on the nape of my neck. It was the gaze again. There was something there, watching me. Don't look at me. Did you really think I'd turn around? I knew the rules of the game better than anyone. The it'll take more than that to turn make me turn around game. Fear sent goosebumps all over my body, and I felt a strong urge to check that the door was locked. But instead of doing that, I just continued to stare at my monitor as I was way too stubborn to let myself loose. Lose. Unable to calm down, I opened up my default word processor and wrote down everything on my mind. That has to be it. Demon girl equals cold-blooded murderer, has precognitive powers. Shogun equals demon girl's underling. Yua equals shogun's underling. 
Okay. He's trying to rationalize everything right now, trying to connect the dots in his own way. As I stared fearfully at the word demon, I began to wonder if the girl at the crime scene was actually a real demon. I mean, come on, she couldn't be human by any means. If she was a demon, she might actually be able to see the future. And if she could see the future, projecting a scene from the future onto a picture via psychic photography would be child's play. Psychic photography, there's a, there's a, that's a new one. It would line up perfectly with how she'd managed to carry out the gruesome crucifixion all on her own. She'd then gotten her underling, Shogun, to send the image to me, the person who she knew would end up accidentally witnessing the crime scene. I didn't know why she'd done that. Maybe it was a threat. This will be ne you next if you tell anyone what you saw. Or, or maybe. It was a death sentence. You're next. And if that really was what it meant, then... And once again, we are reaching the point where I'm legitimately intrigued in the story. But right now, I can't go any further. I need to go get some medicine. So, it looks like next episode we're going to be starting off in Yua's perspective. Once again, showing that, in my personal opinion, Seira is negative, is a clutch, is something that he clings to desperately onto. And then we see him trying to rationalize everything that, make, that would keep him, you know, sane trying to rationalize everything to figure everything out and then the reveal that he's in that photo I had a feeling that was the case and I'm glad that I was right but now we're in a chapter where we are actually shifting perspectives we got to go through to see through a dude named Bond's perspective or not really not really their perspective I stand corrected um we get to see what's going on in their neck of the woods. And now it looks like next episode we're going to be seeing things on Yua's side, which is interesting. Because last time we saw her, we separated, with you know, on rather negative terms. So, this will be interesting. But right now, I need some allergy medication. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.